yeah. You've been, uh, you've been uh, asking a lot of these interesting well, questions. Yeah, right? so I think we left off where... Um, yeah, we never actually found the answer to that. I still don't know the answer. Uh, for if you were in the Tom Cruise Vanilla Sky scenario, where you have a lucid choice between lucid dream or waking up, did you, did you, I don't think you actually decided yet. Well, you still don't know. Well, if I was given the option... Mm-hmm. Yeah. That right after after all that time, I know that I'm given a choice: either experience my dream again the way that I want it, or go and experience what real life is. Even though that that will be completely different, and I don't know what it is, and I. I have no clue. You find, you find out you're in like that AI thing that yeah. we, well, we watched this morning. Everything is just AI. There's no real people. There's no <laughs> real people. And, and and you know it's like it's like at the end of the Matrix where you know the clouds are are all over and humanity is just dead and and you. <laughs> well, maybe you you wake up and you find out there's well, we thought we humans. There's no human. It's just a Rick and Morty video game. <laughs> you know, or that, or that. Real. Yeah, 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 exactly. So. I mean, would you would you take that risk? You want, yeah. I personally, the Rick and Morty universe is pretty awful when you think about it. Oh yeah, uh, we we make fun of it because he's got almost like godlike powers. But if you're not Rick, it, the it's, universe is awful. Everything's it's, horrible. It's exactly the same as as I guess our our own type of existence. Well, the thing is. Rick is the self-presumed god of all of it, and he's miserable. And he's miserable. And I mean, well, I, if I was if I was a god and I was in charge of a whole universe, I'd be pretty fucking miserable as well. Because <laughs> not only that, not only have to do I have to think about my own existence, but I have to think about every other existence. How it, how it all how it all plays in into my plan of. In the irony is he can't. Ex- he's just an alcoholic. Like I don't want to. It's all meaningless. According to Rick, right? Oh yeah. Like the existence is future. What's the point? Well, as we drink. Well, <laughs> then, then, and that raises the question of, I mean, what's the point of existence? Well, but I think they got it wrong though, because he has that, and he chooses to be miserable because of that. But he doesn't have to. He just chooses it to be miserable. Rick. Yeah. Like oh. Rick chooses to always be depressed. Like. This is meaningless. I have no purpose. But I think that's his choice to feel bad about having no purpose. And meaningless. Well, how else does he get stuff done? I mean, if you... Yeah, but it, it kind of comes back to the idea of, like, the getting stuff done for what? Why do you have to get stuff done? I well, mean, in order to get a sense of meaning, in order to justify your existence. Yeah, but I'm not sure why that you have to have that. Why otherwise, meaning other, otherwise, purpose? why exist? But why do you have to have meaning and purpose? Why can't you just enjoy existing? Why do you have to have a reason to exist? Because, I mean, if if you didn't have a goal or purpose in life, then you would just end up depressed. Mm. See, see, because that answer there it says that you would wake up from the lucid dream, because the lucid dream is pointless. You want to see the reality. I would wake up. It's the right. scenario. The, the, the scenario that comes to mind is that uh, you know we we live our human life to eventually get rewarded, and that reward comes in in whatever heaven that we choose for ourselves. Mm. You know, we we come in and we are given whatever we want. And this seems like the, the this seems like the heaven that I chose for myself. If I'm dreaming, if I'm lucid dreaming, that this is the ideal place that I have chosen. But or hell, or hell, or hell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and 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 that could be that could be a good point. Like maybe you're enjoying hell. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that could be my hell. Maybe the the idea. That you design your own reality and that's the best for you. Maybe that is true hell. Maybe 
the you're yeah, miserable and you chose it. I mean, if if, <laughs> if, if if you think about it, if you think about it, like, do you do you really know what you need, or do you think you know what you need? I think I do now. I think most people don't. Though. But but do you actually know what you need? I mean, if, if if you got what you need right now, would you say that this is enough? I don't need it anymore. I think I logically can reason it out, but then emotionally you forget constantly. Logically, you can say, okay, you know what? I should be happy with what I have. I'm actually in a good place. Okay. And then the next moment, some, you get an email. You get overcome with bad emotions and you forget all that logic and you just become distraught again with minutiae of everyday meaningless problems. So, so then in, in this case, what, what do you need in order to be happy, for example? Yeah, exactly. What do you need? That's a good question. And it sounds like you can come up with an answer, but the answer doesn't seem to sustain because you yeah. forget about it that. Because it's always changing. Every single day that you live, yeah. you always need something different. Or maybe it stays the same. It's just it, it just so unattainable that you can never reach it. Like well, you can even reach it, but then suddenly you get another chemical uh, stimuli and then you forget. Like you feel happy. Let's say you had a goal and your goal was write this computer program, and you did it, and you nailed it. Yeah. You feel amazing. Yeah. And then five minutes later, something else happens, and you, co- you suddenly become upset again. <laughs> right? <laughs> you actually had purpose. You accomplished. You achieved. You then did I, all the things. And I, then you still got upset the next minute because someone spilled coffee in your face. <laughs> and they well, I, I, you. I achieved my purpose. I, I achieved my goal. And now it's time to find a new one. Yeah, and now someone else completely distracts you with some new problem to make you feel miserable. And, you know, we, we design our own problems that we solve, and we get rewarded by fixing the problems that we cause. <laughs> like, that's kind of school, really. Right? You get a good mark in the test, and you're like, yay! And then you forget that you just did good on your last exam, and you feel bad about not knowing stuff for your next question. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I only look at the things that I did wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm not interested in the things that I did right. Yeah, it's very hard to focus on the things you did right. And I, I think that reflecting back on it, I'd, I, if I look back on my life, I'd only look at points that I didn't do as good at or, or just completely wrong, like any embarrassing moments. And, and, and that's, you know, that's something that comes in every single time, you know, going to bed, going to sleep. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man, I got a long day tomorrow. I just want to get some rest. And then my brain just tells me, hey, you know what? Why don't you remember the time, the cringiest time when 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 you did that thing in front of the class? The thing that didn't matter, but it was still embarrassing. (laughs) And and, and everybody forgot. Everyone forgot. But you remembered. Yes. And that was the important bit. And you just can't go to bed after. It's just. Yes, that's right. Or like some, I don't know, you had a date or something and she oh. said something she didn't, I don't know, whatever. And then you think about that for the next six months. <laughs> right? <laughs> it, just, it, 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 it it's hurts right there. It's just like a sequence of five minutes that just <sighs> someone said the right sentence that just destroyed you. <sighs> and you took that five minutes out of the day. And suddenly, your next those six months could have been completely different. <laughs> hey, but at least that experience happened. At least that five minutes left that much of an impact in your life. Even though mm. it might have been negative, it might have been positive. At at least you've experienced something. And I think that that is where true happiness comes from. Oh, is Ooh. the experiences that you don't think about that just stick with you i mean what when has yeah you like some when have you remembered a time when everything just went as planned and do you remember those moments fondly hmm. it's usually the ones you remember the ones you have to fight for and and the ones that are just completely unexpected the ones that just come out of nowhere and those are the memories where the moments where you didn't plan, the moments where you didn't think, mm. and they just happened, and you were there at the right moment, the mm. right time in order to experience it. 
And then those are the memories that you take with you. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I remember earlier we asked you uh, what were your favorite highlights. Let's say your life was about to flash before your eyes. And then what moments would you like to flash? And you said none. Yeah. And so I have a bunch, actually. And there's, there's a few that I want to mention. Um, but I kind of just exactly what you said. I didn't plan them. They just happened to be that way. Uh, one was dancing with a girl at a conference it was something called model un model united nations mm-hmm. where we pretended we were delegates to the united nations and i think i was kazakhstan of all places <laughs> so i should have been borat in <laughs> retrospect but i don't think i was smart enough to have seen that show at that point <laughs> so it was too stupid to know all the jokes did you come in with an accent? No, I hadn't seen Borat yet, unfortunately. <laughs> but other people were expecting it. They were making jokes about it. But I, didn't, I wasn't, I don't know, mature enough to be Borat. No, <laughs> Whatever that means. I mean, mature, immature, I, I don't know. Whatever anyway, so there's, yeah. a, there's a dance. Uh, we're listening to the song Fireflies by Owl City. Ooh. So there's lots of colored lights that are changing in a disco. They're playing Fireflies. There's a pretty girl. We're dancing together. That moment I remember, and it happens to be captured on photo, which is what I tried to show on Facebook, but I couldn't find that photo. Oh. That's one of them. But that wasn't planned. Never saw the person afterwards. But that, that was a memorable one, and that one felt good. That one just sticks in my head. Yeah. I guess like, no, I didn't really intend for that. Yeah. It was a complete accident. Well, I think nothing that we actually remember is anything we intended. It just sort of happened. Yeah, who and just like that random moment. event would stick with me 20 years later or whatever. And, and now you know, reflecting back on the, on the Tom Cruise thing mm. is that, sure, you can create your own reality. You can create your own heaven. Mm. But it's still planned. It's still the way that you would want to live it. Mm. But that's the idea is that do you really want to live a time in which you planned? Do you, would you really remember that moment? Sure, in the moment, it might seem that it's fun, but it's not a moment that came with the same level of engagement Mm -hmm. can you would you want to live in heaven would you want to live in the first matrix where everything's all rosy that's right that's a good point maybe you don't want to live in heaven where you chose everything to be perfect maybe that's not so good because you see it as just a a facade you want to have problems you need some good and bad yeah to recognize the good over the bad Obviously, you need to lose at some moments. You need to win at others. You need to see, like, it's worth fighting for. Because if you just get rewarded for everything that you do, I mean, I, I could just sit in my room and jerk off all day. <laughs> feel like a winner. But it's, it's very hard to feel good if you do that constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it, I think it's just evolutionary, right? You... We... we we end up, if, if you're in a room for a long period of time, you know, you go insane, you go crazy. So you, obviously you need other people and you, know, you can't just sustain yourself by being locked in a room, <laughs> jerking off to some weird porn. <laughs> Interesting. Cause we, we've all tried that where you literally give yourself everything that you like. You watch the movie, your favorite movie, you eat your favorite food, you Maybe you hung out with your best friend and then you keep chasing that experience over and over again. And then it kind of wanes down over a while, right? Unless, well, maybe the friend can keep it up. But if you don't have the social contact, it definitely wanes down. Oh, yeah. Definitely lose the high. And then you seek new experiences in order to sustain it. You seek... Yeah. Actually, you're right. The friend part seems to sustain it. If the friend keeps coming back, somehow you can keep the high going. Yeah. But you take the friend out of the equation, it's very hard to do it on your own for some reason. 
Yeah, it, it drops off more dramatically or drastically. I, yeah, I guess you could do a lot of things on your own, but it's not everything. You could be happy on your own. Yeah. Very tough. I think a lot of people experience that for COVID for the first time, where they literally haven't been able to do social, and they have to see themselves alone for a long period of time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some people are driven crazy by, them, by living with themselves. Especially if they've never examined their own thoughts. Oh, yeah. They constantly distract themselves with everything. Yeah. You know, sometimes I, I spend a day, well, not a day, but like just a night where I, I think about, wonder what I'm thinking about. Wonder what the guy inside my head is, is, is plotting or planning or doing, doing the things. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. You can't really have a conversation. It's more like an interview. It's like, Hey, how are you doing? Do you think your subconscious is different thinking different things than your conscious? Do you think they have different goals? I think that they have different drives. One thinks one way, one does another. Hmm. I think that the, the well, the, okay, the thinking and the doing are two separate bits. We can yeah. we can think that yes, this is good for us. We can logically assume that that this is good for us. We need to do it, and we can rationalize that. Yes. Okay. But then there's the doing part and that's, and that's where they completely differ. It's, it's just, you say one thing and, and, and that's why a lot of people, they say one thing and they do another because it's, it's those exact people that are not in touch with both sides. They, they, they can hear as much like, uh, for example, the people that smoke a lot, you know, they, mm. they, they know it's bad for them. Every person that smokes, hopefully every person that's what knows it's bad for them yeah yeah but they still do it and it's that dissociation from the thinking and the and, and the doing and yeah the chemical drive right they they each have different goals you know one one one's goal might be for survival or mm. the need to crave more dopamine or the, you know the, the chemicals and the other's need is to rationalize and think and you know to, to mm. do those things and oh i got two quick questions actually because of that follow-up uh, okay so the first one is cigarettes didn't cause negative health repercussions do you think it would still be bad to take them let's say for some reason they didn't cause cancer they didn't cause any negative effect except that maybe you get the little, little relief with the nicotine well that and somehow, let's say that with no negative long-term effects. I think that it would be in the same department as coffee or checking your phone. It, I mean, there it might be some negative effects of coffee or checking your phone for, for long periods, but either way, it, it's still a habit. It's still something that you, of course, need to sacrifice you know, for, for checking your phone, you might need to sacrifice your time or your attention in order to check your phone. For coffee, you also need to sacrifice your time and your attention to make coffee. And for smoking, even if it didn't, if it caused zero health effects, you still need to spend your time, or in this case, money, in order to buy the cigarettes, yes. buy the lighters. You need to, you need to go, and you need to also spend your time into actually going and then smoking. And so it sounds yeah. like you think that's a negative thing. Well, you think spending time and attention mm -hmm. is on something as trivial as cigarettes or coffee or phone is bad, right? Well, that at the same time, it's, it's about whatever fits in your lifestyle. If you think that you need it, no one else is going to tell you otherwise. You are the person that, that knows yourself best. You know, Sometimes. you have these cravings. Well, well, I mean, everyone has, has cravings of, of, I really, really want watermelon. 
mm. and they go and they buy a watermelon and you know they have the craving but for for cigarettes people know oh i need a cigarette obviously this causes dependence they need to they need a cigarette and that's the the dependence is 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 the part that that i think might mm. people might need to work on because when you do something so much that you need to let's say you have a moment where you just stop having it then you suffer the withdrawal then mm -hmm. if you don't have any more cigarettes then life is just going to be well maybe not that much harder but it's it's yeah. definitely going to get harder because now you don't have your daily routine now you're going to have to change forcibly in, into doing something that you don't want to do. So a two-part question because of that. Uh, first of all, is that sounds like um, dependency is a bad thing. In most cases, yes. But it does make you feel something. And I think we kind of are leaning towards feeling gives you meaning. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's not so bad in that sense. Like, it does make you feel alive. And it gives you True. an experience that is very real, or it feels very real. I need, I have an urge to get this drug. You feel very alive in that moment. True. Desire and purpose, and that gives you purpose. Definitely gives you goals, incentives. Um, I... <clears throat> with so I guess the other part, part was um, it was along the, so we had to go back a little bit mm -hmm. um, oh crap how did we get to the how did, what, what did we go oh it was a uh, cigarette mm -hmm. yeah um, we were saying that it's kind of lame to focus on potentially a trivial thing like a cigarette or phone. Um, but what is, why is that so different than, for example, oh no, no, I remember what I was So, um, you're saying that you're not really aware of yourself. You're chasing the urge for the thing that you need. Yes. But my thought was like, what if, why is that so different than, let's say, you're in a romantic relationship? And usually we think that's a positive thing. Mm -hmm. But I find most of the time when I'm on a date or something, I'm not conscious of what I'm doing. I'm not thinking logically about where I am and how I'm doing things. I'm mostly just chasing the moment. I guess, yeah. why is that <clears throat> considered a good thing? Whereas well, chasing a cigarette? Well, I said so that different. some dependency is bad. Like not 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 all dependency is bad, and I think that relationships in in that case, that the dependencies in relationships tend to be better mm. than the ones that are for cigarettes or the ones where you're dependent on a drug. Or yeah, we think relationships are fulfilling, don't we? In the sense that. We need relationships to survive. Yeah. There isn't really another case. You don't need cigarettes to survive. Of course, it's, mm. it's the sort of, it helps you cope with day-to-day mm. -day things. With relationships, sure, okay, fine. You don't need... Not anymore. I mean, biologically in the past, it helped to survive, but now it's irrelevant. Yeah, now it's just, it's optional but yeah. people still go for it because it's the biological thing to do it's it's people want to have a partner and that is what they strive to do the interesting thing is that's the one thing that separates us from a machine the machine doesn't need another machine for moral support all it needs is a cigarette if it gets the electricity it's good Hmm. Or on the other hand, we think that the relationship's important, but really all we need is a little bit of food. We need the cigarette. 
I mean, she's Whoa. the logical one and just says, I need electricity, I'm good. We're like, no, 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 we need more than that. We need these relationships with are volatile and they come and go and you can't control them and they constantly cause chaos. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I, I like to see ourselves as a ton of status bars. We have status bars. Well, we have... What's a status bar? Like a... Um, uh, like a fuel gauge. Fuel gauge. Yeah, like like uh, for everything that that we do, we have a fuel gauge for. So, for example, mm-hmm. we have a relationship fuel gauge. What's yeah. a fuel gauge in your definition? I don't know what this. You're so, to. how full you like are? Like a gas tank. Yeah, like a gas tank. Oh, okay, all right. Gotcha. Yeah. How full a gas? So, let's say for relationships, right? Mm. Have you been with enough people? Some people, it the gas tank runs dry mm. if they haven't been with a person for over an hour, and mm. they're like, "I need to have some social contact," and so it, it runs faster for for those people. Yeah. Okay. Some people they need social contact for one time in a month, and it works for them, and their fuel gauge is full for the entire next month. Yeah. Same thing with the, the food fuel gauge. The water fuel gauge and and every other bits and, and pieces of life and i think that in that sense we we're not so different from machines in terms of the machines also have fuel gauges for you know the battery and whatnot mm. we just have more of them than yeah, more, m- more more needs. needs yeah otherwise yeah you know we have we have that's gauges for cold or hot or or, or whatnot oh, and that's a cool theory i like that um, yeah we think yeah yeah that's a good point maybe it's just another resource we need yeah we just assume it's not a biological necessity to live but maybe it is one of them just a different kind like the, you know, you do you ever go out and you just want to go for out for a walk or, or constantly you, every day? Yeah. So, for example, that's that's one of your fuel gauges. You just add it on. You, just the need for a walk. It's mm, it's it's that's running low. Of electricity. Yeah. <laughs> and you make things happen the more you need it. So mm. the. the, the we get so, to choose what kind of electricity we want to fill our gas tank with. Exa- exactly. It's going to be a friendship. Tomorrow it's going to be a movie. Today, and, next day is going to be weed. <laughs> Actually, that's an interesting idea. Maybe entertainment is like a form of electricity. This is something we need to occupy us, to, get, to keep us going. We need to be mentally stimulated. Where a machine doesn't need that at all. Yeah, so it's just another resource. I, I well to consume. Yeah, yeah. We. I guess it's entertainment a necessity. Can we live without entertainment? I don't think. I think that's why people go crazy in jail, or crazy in the same silence. There's nothing there to entertain. Old people, they just lose their mind in old people's homes. They got nothing to do. Go bonkers. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be the case when we get there. I think we're going to have VR headsets. <laughs> Oculus. Or what, what, what are they at? Not Oculus Rift now. It's... Uh, the the, is the it Quest. Quest 2. Yeah. I think yeah. it's going to be amazing when we get to old people's homes. Oh, yeah. You're going to have the greatest video games ever to occupy you on any game you want. It's going to be great. I don't know. I, I had VR, or I have a VR headset. Mm. Every time I use it, I, I, they have to. You have they a Quest Two headset. No, I don't have a. I don't have the newer ones. I have the uh, Rift. Is it amazing? It looks amazing. It's it's pretty good. It, the one thing that is kind of uh, about about the the Oculus is that movement is. Oh, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. Yeah, no. you need to. You need to have. <sighs> Essentially, you get motion sickness. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you get very, very yeah. nauseous and and dizzy. I was. Uh, I get that from Portal too. Yeah, I I, I get. Um, yeah, now imagine playing Portal, but instead that's 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 you just 
flying through it instead it'd be of great for five minutes yeah for five minutes yeah it's amazing <laughs> but then you know we might need to throw up like you know so, oh my god it's so amazing <laughs> oh, I, handle the awesome. <laughs> I think that they should create just a simulation of being in a in a, but they'll, they'll a, fix that in a decade or two they'll fix the motion sickness yeah that's something that'll be fixed yeah that's not gonna be there for long yeah i Hopefully, hopefully. I want to play Gorn What's without Gorn? using the... the What's Gorn? Uh, Gorn is essentially... You are a brawler. Like a fighter. Yeah, like a fighter. Okay. Beating the crap out of other NPC mm. type of things. That just, that just r- runs, runs to you with, with a, a weapon, tries to swing... At you tries to damage you. If you get hit, then you have like a countdown timer, and you need to kill something, otherwise you just die. Oh, okay. It, it really, it really incentivizes you to get in there and just beating the crap out of everything. It's a fun game, although I wouldn't recommend playing it with any type of any type of fragile things around you stay away from people who are sensitive yeah i it's not the it's very violent yeah it's saying. yeah 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 essentially you're, you're gonna be crushing the skulls of this, skulls. Pers- this person that just ran to you 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 just pick them up and start slamming them down on the ground. Is it good graphics it's cartoony oh yeah i don't think i have guilt for cartoons although you're able to like, rip people's heads off, like mm, this Mortal Kombat KO style. Yeah, more Fatality. more like the first person Mortal Kombat. Oh, that's interesting. So yeah, you see it from your own perspective. Yeah, you're ripping the spine out of a man. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Although mm. I don't think you can rip a person's spine out. You can just take a part of their body. Yeah, and just... there'll be a version sooner or later. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's just an interesting point. We made a big deal when Call of Duty came out, and parents were like, this game's too violent for our children. And then um, Grand Theft Auto came out, this game is too violent for our children. <laughs> and now we have VR first person, you're ripping the spine out of an innocent bystander. Yeah, it seems And we better. don't even have any complaints now. Now we just got past that. Well, I think because all of the kids... So the parents that were in the previous generation, the kids of those parents grew up and they understood that, listen, (laughs) I've played Mortal Kombat for all of my youth and I don't want to rip anyone's spine Mm. out. So I think I think those are the parents now that learned from the mistakes of the previous parents. Mm. They learned that, oh, well, these are just. These are just unproven I wasn't allowed to watch Simpsons growing up. It was too too risque. Yeah, and and too, are, are, mm. a, a question: If you had kids, would you not let them watch or do stuff? My current thought is so well. Before we had this conversation, <laughs> uh, my general thought is. What difference is going to make? Well, I'm going to hide it from them, and then they're going to stay on their own. Yeah. Like, I don't think you can hide anything. You can't hide violence. You can't hide people suffering, torture. You, you can pretend not... You can not intentionally show it. No, okay. But if you, like, put child controls on your computer that might last for, like, a na- maybe you give them a year... <laughs> Or two until they happen to find it through their friends, right? Like, it was a lot easier before computers and internet came out. You could literally stop your kid from discovering that other people are doing it. <laughs> like, I don't think that's now an option. And then they'll find it out and then they'll be traumatized because they got no, they won't know what, what how to deal with this because they weren't prepared for it. But yeah, I guess that's a good point. What age do you expose your kids to that? 
let's say you had a kid now, and what age do you want to wait before you start telling him all the atrocities? Because it's best you bring it out to them, right? Oh, yeah. You don't want them to discover and not how to know how to deal with it. Well, and I think this is one of the one of the great talking points. And I strongly believe that an open discussion needs to be have had with any type of uh, child. Mm, what age would you so would you do that for, well, with your kid? Or do you think ob- they- obviously they're they're going to do things in, in, in their life. They're gonna watch things, they're gonna you know, hang out with, with friends and, and whatnot. Mm. Now I think some previous generation parents they their ways of going about it was to restrict them to say <laughs> that no, not allowed, not under my roof, period. But Our belief system doesn't support discussing this. Exactly. And, and when you close off the discussion, you leave them in that position where now they are interested in a subject and now they're restricted from ever doing it they ever again. Know, they don't even know that to be interested, though. But they don't even know that. Well, okay, okay. But the, the thing is, is that if I told you that, listen, you can't do this thing. Mm. What's the first thing you want to do? Well, actually, I wasn't a rebellious kid, so I would actually listen to that. Okay, but but at the same time, it's like you you can't you can go anywhere in the house, mm. but this room. But this room. But, I mean, you would want to know what's in the room. It's you would want to know what's in the box. That's, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> so there was like I remember there's a movie called Deep Blue with Samuel Jackson. It's about sharks. Okay. And sharks eat people. That's, that's all they do the whole movie. There's randomly sharks that have, they inject them with adrenaline and the sharks just kill everyone in the movie until there's, almost everyone's dead. Okay. And that terrified me. I couldn't go in the deep end, the swimming pool. So scared of the stupid sharks. And it lasted for years and years. I was so scared every time I went in the pool of sharks, especially if I closed my eyes. Mm. In the water, I closed my eyes. It became very scary to me. Oh. Do you think that you'd be better off not watching the movie? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, knowing what you know now. Because like, I don't know how that helped me. Now it's fine. I can watch any scary movie, but somehow I'm And go to the deep now. end? <laughs> now I'm really jaded and it's okay somehow. <laughs> but that, that came after many years of not being able to watch horror movies. Like, I've only been able to watch horror movies in the last five years. I couldn't watch it before that. I just wasn't mentally strong enough yet. Yeah. I guess you, you never really know when you're ready. Nobody really knows when they're ready to experience something. Like, now I know I'm ready. But I wasn't ready at that point. Because I was scared of but the sharks. How do you know Different. when you're ready? When yeah, you're mentally good. ready? I do you know that? That is a good point. And, uh, and like lots of parents, right? Especially when talking about sex. Yeah. When are you ready for that? When are you ready to talk about sex? I mean, uh, you know, you can't do it too late because then... But I mean, sex is one of those things where it's, it's a little easier because there's a biology. You're like, okay, he's getting closer to the age where... Okay, so, so when... when, when what, how you old them to will... Video games or violence. Okay. That's a bit more tricky. Okay. Well, when when would you choice. expose them? Yeah, that's a good question. When do you expose them? Like, I mean, sex is easy because you can do it in a certain age group. Okay. But it's not so easy to expose them to bigger things that are not tied to your age. I'm very liberal when it comes to just violence and whatnot. Mm. I think that in a sense, it might be naive, but I think that everyone, a majority of people, maybe not everyone, wants to do things that are morally good and can understand what is morally good and what is morally not good. And I think that you, you discern this, kids discern this at, a, at an age, maybe eight or nine years old, what is 
why you can't just kill the person and take their toy. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I mean, I guess, I guess before that, it's an option. Like you don't really perceive. That's right. Because if you don't, if you don't give your kid any values, that's not good either. Yeah. Well, you gotta make some value, even if they're bogus, and you change your mind later. But you gotta give them some framework in yeah. the beginning, even I, if it's wrong. I think. I think. I. I, I would be. I would be. I, my my parents were also pretty liberal with with me playing video games that that i enjoyed mm. i would play mature games i would play At whatever what games or there were, and no age there was no you could just straight from the go you could play yeah. mature games yeah straight from the go any any game that i essentially wanted to play i would, I would play of course of course it was if um you know i have a brother he started playing violent games and <laughs> And I guess it was around the time where he started to become a bully. Really? Yeah. And oh, that's interesting. And do you think that was related? Or do you think we would have done that? I us? just well, again, it's it's all interpretation. Oh, that's, that's but true, but true. what I what I do know is that instead of let's say bullying and just saying oh these video games are causing it mm. and stopping the video games. I don't think that that would have prevented it. Instead, what my parents did is is they sent him to play soccer. And I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah that's interesting. Ob- obviously, well, not obviously, but if you put it in perspective, the energy that he had—he had a ton of energy. <laughs> the energy that he had. I think was going into bullying other kids and it was now being put into into soccer, into yeah. something that's more productive and, and encompassing. And he didn't bully anyone after that. It wasn't... Your parents chose the distraction for the kids. So, so I, I, don't, I don't think that... I, I think that kids are just violent either way. They're, they have energy. They need to do something with it. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So if, spend it on. If, you, if you keep them in a building for eight hours a day mm. you know they're gonna get violent they're gonna start ripping people i mean you, you keep a, certain adults in a building too too long they're gonna they're gonna do that i yeah, think that every in, office worker essentially <laughs> for two years you might do that you never know yeah 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 every office worker there comes a time where every day you're coming to the office for 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 30 years it's the, it's some guy you don't like and then and then it just one person just snaps and says screw this and <laughs> yeah and then takes the especially if your work sucks takes takes the uh, takes the expressway <laughs> out the window <laughs> express elevator out the window the, I like to call it the emergency exit <laughs> yeah <laughs> from the 30, 30th floor <laughs> um. yeah that's right. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. So I I would be pretty liberal when it comes to. Remember that uh, YouTube channel you showed me? Yeah. Where there's they're giving the AI information, and then the AI is given access to launch codes. Remember that one? Yeah, twenty seven. Yeah, twenty seven, and then the AI decides to nuke the world. Yes. The premise in that one is the AI doesn't know that uh, he's in a simulation. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know that. And so he decides to nuke the world to um, stop people from existing because people just cause all the problems. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, in that sense, an AI is kind of like a kid. You're choosing to expose it to things. Mm-hmm. choosing to give it information. Let's say we actually have that situation at some point where we do make an AI. But I guess it's kind of like that, where you can't really control what information it gets, just like you can't control what information your kid gets. True. So you kind of well, put some training wheels on it or lock it in there somehow. With, with an... With an AI, right? AI is just absorbs information, interprets it as is. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's highly related to what kids do and are, but with a big but. Mm. If you look at 
any animal on earth. When it gets born, it knows exactly what it needs to do in order to survive. Ooh, ooh, that's interesting. If you look at birds, they know that if the mother bird is there, they open their beaks and go like, oh, 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 oh feed me, that's essentially. Right. That's right. If you, know, you have, a, you have a, a cat or kittens, they all get born and they're like, meow, meow, meow. That's right. like they're calling yeah. for their mom or, or whatnot. If, if a baby is born, they're calling, mom. No, actually meow. the baby is the one thing that can't survive in its own. And, and, uh, right? Yeah. That's the weird thing. The baby actually can't live on its own. I, I think that that's, and we've sort of evolved with that, knowing that, well, the mother's basically out of commission for a year or two because the baby can't, yeah, there are, no, not a year or two, but like more than that. Basically, the baby can't survive on its own until five years old or whatever, until it can learn to walk and talk and whatnot. Isn't that so strange that the, the higher up the food chain you go, somehow you become less able to survive when you're first born. Isn't that, isn't that weird? If you had a kid right now, that kid would die unless you did something. Yeah. Isn't that strange? Whereas anything lower than maybe a mammal, and even a lot of mammals, but definitely anything lower than a mammal, as soon as it's born, is probably good. Yeah. And, and same thing with, uh, with, with whales. They have uh, their their calf or, or whatever it's called. They need to have it by its side or basically it sticks with it for a year or whatnot or a couple of years mm. in order to... To not kill to, itself. To, to not just die, outright die because... Yeah. And same thing with elephants, right? They, they have like a little calves. And yeah, suddenly you get big. And then you don't know how to live. Somehow we lost all the instincts. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe just, just evolution. Maybe it just became too complicated. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. And well, and those are also the creatures that live the longest. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's so strange. Yeah. So I and I think that with with the with the kids, right? Uh, kids themselves. They are born with the disposition to, of course, get information. They're, they're sponges. But at the same time, they still have that sense of morality by the time that they grow up. Oh, do they? If you weren't there, would they still have morality? Yeah. If yeah. you never I, talked to a kid, do you think, and the kid was somehow without any other human interaction... He would have any morality? Well, of course, there might be some social problem, and that's the whole discussion about nature and nurture. Mm. So how, how, much, how much does nature play in? How much does nurture play in? Well, again, if, if, we look at, if we look at mammals, if we look at cats, for example, they could, kittens could survive. Well, they can't cats actually... They, 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 can't, they can't survive without their mom for the first... Maybe one, two, three weeks, maybe. And then after that, they can survive on their own for as long. They, they don't have to be with other cats. They just know what to do. And I think that, that human babies are almost exactly like that. They, if you leave them in a box, no social... Co well, of course, you know, humans, they need social contact. But I think that they, in that sense, would know what they need to do they need <laughs> they need food they need to cry and and uh, and poo and and do all the things in order th for them to live and then they would naturally i think start thinking and interpreting and exploring mm. learning yeah it seems yeah and you're probably right and it seems that that is a little bit built in, isn't it? Or at least you have a tendency to lean towards it sooner or later. Yeah, because, well, like, what, what is school, for example? Like, uh, if, if we all couldn't learn, or we all didn't have the capability of learning, then, then why would you know, there, there be schools? Why would we... Sure. You know, we weren't taught to seek to learn. We were just 
hey, go learn this. And it's like, okay, <laughs> I'll do this, I guess. And that's that's the way that we that's the way that we've been doing the things. It's just okay, sure. <laughs> they taught a bunch of stuff that may or may not be right. Yeah. But we think that it's generally good to give the kid this information. Yeah, it's like uh, we think this is guiding them for some reason. Yeah. Even though they're not going to use the information 90%, 90% of the time. But we I th- think they should learn this, or at least be given it. I think it's important that the kids learn how to learn. True, but that's not taught a lot of the time. Or we try to teach it, and it doesn't well, stick for a lot of people. And, but at, at, at the same time, you can't really teach that. You can, you, can, uh, you can do your best to try to explain it. Yeah. But the thing is, is that every kid is going to come to a point where they need to teach themselves. They need to grasp a topic, and they need to learn it enough in order to learn it for themselves yeah, like we i deal about that don't we we're like i think it's really important <laughs> right teachers always talking about that Ugh. that's my goal yeah it's it's all about just the motivation of the person you can't teach motivation but the irony is that is if they could do that and they actually succeeded then you don't need the damn teacher <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well well but at the same time you don't need a ladder in order to hang up your Christmas lights. True. But it sure does help. <laughs> don't need a ladder to hang up Christmas lights. But I mean, I, well, okay, let's say a teacher did a really good job and taught a kid how to learn how to learn. Okay. Then you should just be able to say, okay, here's a list of all the things that you should figure out. Good luck. And here's all the resources you need to learn them. Go. But then, uh, but then the kid would say, "Why?" And then he just here's the why's as well, right? But then the kid would be like, "Well, I don't want to do that." Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> the kid, well, exactly, they didn't learn how to learn that. They didn't learn the motivation to learn. Yeah. Um, I and I think that's where the interest comes by. Is that we assume that. Hey, if you throw enough topics at the kid, they're going to get uh, interested in something. They might, you know, spark their interest. Actually, that's a good point. The teacher's job, I mean, oh, yeah, we say we, we want the kid to learn how to learn, sure. But really, the teacher's job should be to try to get the kid interested in learning. Mm-hmm. Or so interested to learn a, definitely not a topic. Focus. Yeah. Definitely, that's not the focus. Yeah. Because we're, we're, it's, it's more abstract you're you're giving them the opportunity to like a, a taste a litmus test in order to to see if they like doing litmus tests <laughs> i uh i mean they probably you know. think of your favorite teachers uh, my favorite teachers that i can think of are ones who for some reason got me or for some reason i like was interested in the subject and usually I think that the teacher got me interested in it, but maybe they did, maybe they didn't. For some reason, I was interested in the subject, and the teacher was there at the time. So it was just the right teacher, right time, right subject. Like, I happened to be interested in computer programming, and I always said, oh, my first computer teacher was the one who got me into it. But what if it had been a different teacher? Maybe I'd still have been interested in it. Would have oh, said yeah. that teacher's the most pivotal guy. That's true. That's true. Maybe it's irrelevant who I, the person was. I don't know. I, I don't even think... Well, I, I chose to be a, a software developer not because it... Because the teacher was like, hey, yeah, this is a cool course. No, no, no. Because... And I, I looked at my dad. Mm. He was pretty. He was oh, living yeah, a mom, pretty. That's right. Yeah, he was. He was living a pretty comfortable life, going and doing software development, getting money for it, mm. coming home, and it was essentially a, a comfortable job. And it, it just like seems like there, good time. there's a there's a lot of job prospects for this. You don't. You know, it's mm. not one of these academic type of careers where you you have to beg to be a research assistant like you have to do for chemistry and whatnot biology so it's 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 one that pays actual money and that it deals with you know real life things you're you're actually working with software and building things in order for people to use 
That's what I'm interested in. Theoretics can go into school and then people can think of other kick-ass algorithms that I could use in order to advance business ideas. And, yeah. You know. Let's go back a moment. Yeah. So, I don't know. Do you agree with this premise? Though? Like, the teacher's goal is to get the kid interested. Like, all the rest yeah. of the stuff that we do in school is going to be forgotten. So... I, I, I forgot like almost every, or everything. <laughs> my, my parents, I'm, I asked them some math problems, I guess, well, a, a long time ago about something. And they, they learned the things, the math things that I learned pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they make sense because they know how to learn mm-hmm. or learn difficult topics. And I'm just looking, I'm like, oh, well... I, I I'm not gonna remember any of this, and and uh, looks you like they, they get it though. Yeah, but but then but then now I bet I can learn it. I mean, it'd probably take me some time, but I can probably sure. learn it. I'm sure I could pick up calculus again if I really needed to. I don't yeah. remember anything of it now. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember anything. I'm sure I could do it. Yeah, yeah. I just go, I Google search away, and you know, you, you're an expert. And one one Google search, one YouTube video, and you're good. <laughs> and you can teach calculus at that point. <laughs> on the other hand, let's say a subject. What's what's a subject I don't care about? <laughs> um, uh, what's a subject you're not interested in? <laughs> or is that too hard of a question? Well, it's easy to do that. Well, the, no. Okay, okay. I used to think hard. some time ago. I guess when I was in grade eight, there wasn't a use for social studies. I just i oh, I, okay, I, sure. I i didn't I didn't see a point simply because I couldn't apply it to anything that I've been doing so far. No. But of course, now that I'm, now that I'm older and I, I see how the different applications, I, I did also take another course in, um, in, uh, in college where it was essentially talking about social stuff. So, about race and 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 whatnot yeah one of essentially why the about sociology i think yeah that's 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 the word (laughs) try to remember the course because it was so yeah uh you know you have to talk about race and prejudice and now could that be because your teacher didn't get you interested in it no, well, he was monotone, but he did express interest in the topic. Yeah, but did he, do you think could it be his fault that he didn't figure out a way to make it interesting? I, if I were teaching the course, I wouldn't even find a way. It it was just the the course material was something that it was like, huh, okay. So kind of like they they talked about <laughs> they talked about slavery and. And something, I guess social stuff. Stuff you I, can't relate to. Yeah, and and well, you I don't for some reason. And and I look at that and I'm I'm like, yeah, slavery happened, I guess, and <laughs> and I I I wasn't there, but it happened, and now they're talking about it, and okay, I guess I'm supposed to feel sorry about it. But yeah, it's like that with World War One history. World yeah, I don't yeah. Know how? Why do I care? It's, it's like, like I, I understand why I need to know, but, but why do I have to, I understand the social stigma. I, I, I understand that, that yes, it was, it was essentially like, you know, the, the slavery came by and, and we need to recognize that it, that it happened. We globally the society say this is no longer good and i guess th- there was there was like a a college in, or university in nova scotia that that had some some guy that had slaves at one point Ooh. and they they wanted to rename it to something different but they didn't rename it because of the because that college was named or that uni- university was named that way for a long time yeah and i guess the 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 name that the university had had more of an impact than the person it was behind it's offending people who no longer exist to be offended yeah well i guess people will be offended with by anything i mean i guess like of course 
if you want to really, really look back, look at the Romans. Slavery was just normal for the Romans. If you want to really say something, you just denounce Roman society. You just say that that Latin is bad because the Romans had slaves <laughs> and that we shouldn't be able to use Latin. And as, as a result, we shouldn't be able to speak in English. It, I mean, yeah, so sure. It's, battles, it's, right? it's, it's just a, it, it's, it's a name. It's, it, it has, yes, racial impact, slaves and whatnot. Slaves are bad. We're, we live in a different cultural time. But at the same time, we need to understand that these people did great things. Yes, sure, they'd had slaves. But that doesn't mean that you just erase history by just, you know, going and, and saying, oh, well, they did a bad thing one time. That means yes. they need to be wiped out. And, and, but, and then you look forward 500 years and people are going to be saying that, <laughs> oh, no, well, he... I don't know. He wore his socks inside out. That way we need to <laughs> go. And of course, I'm not saying that slavery is as equal as, you know, going uh, inside out socks, but sure. it's, um, yeah. I, I guess the other thing with when it comes to interest, and like you, not everyone needs to be interested in the same things. Just because I happen to think that this subject is important doesn't mean that other people need to think that as well. Like, the teacher can try to get the kid... Like the teacher happened to get me interested in computer programming, but it doesn't have to succeed, I guess. Maybe it's just they have to be... Maybe the goal of school is to surround kids with topics and try to get them interested in it. But they don't have to succeed in all of them. It's just to try to get the kids interested in a bunch of subjects. And mm -hmm. hopefully one of them will take them somewhere. Yeah. And it shouldn't... But we put a lot of emphasis on grades. Well, it, but maybe the grade is less and less important than it used to be. I think it doesn't matter in the, in, in the long run. Well, Not even anymore. even in the short, even in... No. It, it, it just gives you the evaluation that you need in order to... Evaluation and inspiration in order to continue on it. Like, And it's all based on the feedback that people receive, right? If Yeah. Like, for every course that I think that I that I ever took was that uh, I did bad almost every single time during the first part of the course, <laughs> almost oh, all yeah, the courses. I, I I think I think over eighty percent, over eighty percent, I've gotten what maybe seventy or sixty percent. Sounds like that for uh, for personal. The, obstacle you created for yourself yeah maybe maybe, maybe. It but sound like there's anything but i reality. i honestly what i do is i test the waters i i see the first few assignments or whatever that i hand in i know that it's below the average of what i can do mm. and i want to test the waters i know i i know it is i know i can do more mm. but i want to see okay how do I really have to put in that much effort for Check this instructor? The wall and you don't know yeah. what's going to stick. Exactly, exactly. And and it's the first few marks or the few, first few assignments. It doesn't really even matter for, for in the long run. And then you can see if the if the teacher is going to mark going to mark really really hard, or if the teacher doesn't even care, just says check mark you did you did the thing, <laughs> and and. I guess if all all the marks are is just performance for me. It's it's like okay, well, I guess the, this teacher was not satisfied enough with my my bare minimum, so I guess I'll give him a bit more. Oh, look at that! I I got it. And of course, you know, the other tests are actually useful. Tests like there's obviously there's times that tests are pointless, and there's times where tests are really good. When do you think it's like a good time to have a test? Like a, a lot of time we have quizzes in school that don't serve any purpose except frustrate us. And we could get rid of some of them. But when do you think we actually do need a test? When is it actually useful? I think testing is good concept, but... And I think that it... Um, Nobody found a better way 
in order to... Because right now we have tests for every subject. Yeah. We just accept it. Yeah. Like, because because no one, no, no, one, no one found a better way. Every class we need tests. But well, is there like a general... These kind of problems are good when we test them. And these kind of problems are... Well, probably we don't need to focus so much on giving tests for these kind of things anymore. Oh, okay. There, there are some of those courses, yes, where it's entirely graded on assignments. Mm. The assignments that you hand in. And I think that even for those courses, they still have tests, but the tests are worth like almost nothing. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're just so there to... 1% and you stress over them and they mean nothing. Yeah. You do all of them and you get like 5% out of the whole course yeah exactly and then the, the, essentially they mean absolutely nothing but just stress over nothing for no reason but uh, like at the uh at, at the same time i think that they have a place and of course i'm i'm biased because almost every class that i take has a test mm. has a midterm has a final and it's sort of the the go-to standard i think also because Nobody found a better way mm. in order to incorporate it. No one found a better way of, let's say, knowing, you know, you study the topic, biology. Well, how do you test that you've actually studied? Well, you write a test. Mm. <laughs> like, I have a bone to pick when the test purpose is to say we want 70%. as our cutoff point. And we're going to reevaluate the grades of the class so that we have a bell curve that fits. So that always this percent of the class will oh. graduate in this percent. Will okay, okay. I have a bone to pick with the bell curves. I think, personally, and entirely my own views, mm. I don't know why I'm saying it because everything that comes out of my mouth is basically my own views, <laughs> but bell curves are dumb. They should be completely disbanded they should have no place absolutely no place in education whatsoever mm, first first I, I, I have i have a couple of prepared point now these are all unprepared but i have oh uh first point if a course it was designed that even though the whole class studies and the whole class fails, so it gets less than 50%. Do you think that the students coming out of that class, they know enough of the material in order to be successful? I mean, the, uh, often then we say, well, the teacher taught it bad, right? The teacher didn't teach it. And okay, they and, all and, and that's, that's the second point, all right? If the teacher teaches bad, mm. Fire them. It's it's that simple. If the whole class fails, mm. then either A, the course material... Give the kids dumb. Or the, if the kids are dumb, <laughs> if, if, oh, if you need a bell curve in order to pass mm. people, then you're, either the teacher is bad or the course material is way out of line. Either way, it needs to be reevaluated but what if it's like, what if it's actually a difficult subject? It's a quantum physics course, and it's legitimately hard stuff. It is legitimately hard, yes, quantum physics and, and and whatnot. But at at the same time, it should be possible to get a passing mark. Mm. It, it it can't be because when when you're encur you're encouraging essentially a learning environment is a learning environment. I think that it's. It needs to, in, in its core and its essential, be a cooperative process. Mm. What a bell curve encourages is sabotage. What a bell curve encourages is, why should I work with you and study with you and bounce ideas off of you? Because I actually benefit more if you fail. Why, why do that? And, and that was actually one case where, where um, a teacher actually mentioned that she went to... Uh, I think it was the U of A, mm -hmm. and that was one thing that that her classmates did. It was essentially rip out notes from her from her book because they wanted her to fail. 
Yeah, but I mean, that's kind of a... I mean, okay, fine, 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 fine. fine. Okay, okay. Maybe not for every case, but it, it encourages that a behavior. And anything that encourages that, I, I think, is just is just it has no place. I in. guess it kind of depends on what's what's the outcome of the grade. What does the grade enable you to do? That's I guess that's the. Well, if if it enables you to pass the course, obviously you're going to do whatever it takes in order to do that. And you're pitting mm-hmm. all against all of the students in the class. Obviously, yes, this has a competitive advantage that people are coming in. And they're coming in to say that, oh, oh God, everyone's going to be studying to get the best mark. So I got to study harder. And so, you know, you, you obviously get more people, more students that study harder. But at the, at, at the same time, it's, it's that, it's that you, you give the students this unattainable goal of, 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 okay, you need to study as hard so that you get the, the highest mark on the bell curve. But I think that that goal should and must be attainable at least by the majority of students. And, and, and that's, that's the, that's the whole criteria is that, that you need to, you need to get, the course needs to be designed in such a way that you need to get the, the course material that is taught. Mm. And of course, yes. Okay, okay. That now I'm 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 old, I'm biased on on the whole aspect of of quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Of course, even the people that are teaching that don't even understand what the hell that <laughs> that, that it is, <laughs> or not all bundling. parts. You don't know bundling unless you know bundling. Yeah, <laughs> whatever the hell it was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You, you you don't know recursion until you know recursion, <laughs> and it's it's. Uh, of course, yes, it's 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 very difficult subjects, but I I still think that you cannot I I don't think that the students will get anything out of it if they they're getting 40s on the exams and and they're just 40s, oh, that means A+ plus because bell curve because everyone failed and and mm. Of course, that's a radical example, but under the bell curve, that's exactly the example that's that's possible. I think that every course should be at least possible to do if if, if the instructor okay if the instructor takes an hour to do it and can get all the questions right, he needs to give the students two hours or two hours and, and, and 30 minutes in order to, to do those questions and get yeah. maybe, maybe, uh, 80% of them. Okay, right. So far we've been talking about like a course in the abstract case. Okay. But like a lot of the time we have exams for something like med school. Okay. Where, okay. So actually I have two, two contrasting examples. One is the CFA program, um, chartered financial analyst program. Okay where the whole world writes this exam and you need to get, um, I think it's 80, I think like it's somewhere around 78% or 80% or higher in order to pass. And uh, they purposely make the questions at a difficulty level that only so many students are expected to get over that. And they make the questions hard enough so that Usually, only this number of students will pass. Okay. And that way, by making these questions this difficult, um, when you do happen to pass all three levels, we call it really prestigious. Like, this is, you were, I think, because each year, I think they said something like 40% of the people go through each, actually make it past each level. Okay. So, level one, the three levels, 40%. Maybe even fifty percent. I don't know. Make it through level one, and then forty percent make it through level two, and then of those people, forty percent make it through level three. Um, so, so it's like half, purpose, half every time. Yeah. So I think is. I mean, the people who actually make it through at the end of the day, it's like ten percent of the people who started. Yeah. Or maybe probably less than that. Whatever the numbers. Mm-hmm. Um. But the interesting thing is that the questions that you answer for the most part are memorizing things. Okay. It's a lot of memorization because the questions that you do, you have to do 120 questions in three hours and mm-hmm. then you have a lunch break and then you need another 120 questions in three hours. 
or even 60 questions, whatever it is. But that's uh, not applying so much as just, do you remember how to do this thing? Yeah, it's all memorization. And, and the thing is, Google, I think, remembers better than I do every single time. I trust Google more than my own interpretation. I'm like, oh, let me, yeah. let me just double check that. And I, I, I think, and if I was going to do any sort of work that goes out into production or, or financial segment, uh, yes, of course, I do have the confidence in my own sort of formula and 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 whatnot but i definitely want to double check why do you use a calculator in order to double check that you put the numbers in and even though you know 50 plus 50 is 100 you still want to double check and <laughs> yeah so but essentially what I'm, my point is that the goal of those exams is not so much to prove that the guy knows how to apply the stuff it's rather can he do good on that exam and is he good enough at exam writing to make it past three levels? And then we call it prestigious because it's really hard to do that. Okay, what's, what's the point of doing it then? So that you have prestige at the end of it. It sounds really good when you have that title. I mean, people know how hard it is to get it. Okay. In contrast, but, so first of all, that's an artificial number. We made the exams hard for the sake of making them hard because okay. we don't want too many people to pass. If you have a CFA, it doesn't, like, like, let's compare that to med school, where they literally only have enough spots in the school for so many kids. Mm -hmm. So we have exams, and we have interviews, and we take the best of the best until we reach our quota of students, and mm -hmm. we're done. Uh, med school is actually a reason for doing exams, because we can only take so many people. CFA, on the other hand, we just pick the number. There's no reason for not having more CFA students. We just made them hard because we all think that it's prestigious if we keep the number low. The world needs more doctors. I don't know why that they're restricting it like that. I mean, sure. Because, I mean, med school, you only have enough room for so many seats, right? Well, I mean, then you would go to a different med school. Yeah, but then I mean, they still I, have I, like, exams like, and they take the best of best until the slots are filled, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that seems like a reasonable time for an exam, maybe, for med school. But I'm not so sure it applies the same way for something like a CFA thing. Like, the, like the point of the exam seems to be just the point of being hard for the sake of being hard. Sure, if, if, if it was... Uh, okay, fine. If it was an attendance issue, if it was, if it was an issue where... Listen, we can only take 60 students. Yeah. So the 60 highest people, and that's still not a bell curve. That's, that's, you're, you're taking the people that have the highest marks from that exam that they took. That's not a bell curve. That's, that's literally the, just give me the, the top people that scored, that scored this mm -hmm. up until the lowest person and then accept them. Like that does sound like a reasonable time to have an exam. Yeah. And, and, and none, none of that requires a bell curve. It's just people. I, the reason That's I think. Point. Yeah, the bell curve's not relevant there. I, I, I think the reason why they implemented the bell curve is to keep tenured professors tenured. And, and that's the whole reason, is just to keep those mm -hmm. sweet, sweet positions where the teacher doesn't have to do jack all. They want to keep those seats comfortable. Because the thing is, if, uh, if you're tenured, you don't have to do anything. You, you, you know. so, yeah. so if you were a teacher, what would you do? If I was a, if was a, if I was a tenured yeah. professor? Well, tenured, not tenured, we're good. forget that. If I was a what, teacher. Let's say you're teaching a subject. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, you can pick whatever subject you want. And you're going to teach it. Uh, What's the I, way I, you think would be a good way to do it? I want to teach uh, practical skills. <laughs> the first thing I, 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 I first first lesson: don't attend any of my lectures. <laughs> Go live life. <laughs> maybe it depends on the subject. Maybe it's a case by case basis. Not okay, specific. let's say biology. Sure. Biology. Okay. Sure. Pick a science. All right. So it's a science. Okay, I, I'm teaching a subject now. This is the mitochondria. Sure. The powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> Why are red blood cells red? Communism. <laughs> I'm the best <laughs> biology teacher. So you, first of all, we know you're not going to have a bell curve. Okay. Okay. 
And then I guess it depends on are you doing advanced or are you doing introductory? Maybe all these things are factors, maybe. Yeah, whatever. It's not so simple. I could do I could do whatever. I'm hired as a bio teacher, I'm gonna teach bio. Yeah, I guess it really depends on the age group and how specialized yeah, it's a lot of factors. That's true. There's a lot of things you gotta consider. It's not so easy to just cut and dry rules. And, and and the thing again, again with bell curve is that it is it entirely I mean, we have bell curve, but let's say it's, it's, it let's say it's young. It has no account, the teacher has no accountability well, to whatever that they teach. Okay. High school, you don't want the kids to fail. Okay. What's the point of failing in high school, really? Yeah. What's the point? <laughs> You're teaching mitochondria grade 11. Okay. So what are you, you going to do? Kids are not doing good on the exam. Or do you just not have an exam? <laughs> How are you going to deal with this? Well, What's the strategy? Obviously, if the kid fails, the kid fails. Yeah, I mean, well, again, the, back. Well, yeah. That's that's the whole idea. High if if high school, well, the, the, doesn't matter in high school. I would say you really. Want I, I would I would say they have the option to go to summer school. They have summer school. They can yeah, they can take summer school and they fail. <laughs> well, then double summer school. I don't know. Yeah, but do you really want to fail a kid in high school for biology? Is it really a, any point to hold a kid back for something like that? It turns out that kid's not going to be biologist, I guess. <laughs> no. I, <laughs> if they can't... <sighs> I guess one of those things where, like, we could hold him back, but I guess he just should be doing something else, right? We're going to fail him on something he's not good at? He shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Isn't that a tough Okay, thing? okay. I, I, I see your point. I see your point. Like, that guy should have been doing English teaching. She should have been a writer instead, but we're holding him back in biology. Well, he should have been a pharmacist. Oh, no, that's biology. Too close. He should have been a chef. He would have been great, but we couldn't pass damn high school <laughs> because of this damn teacher who wouldn't pass with biology, so he got the low grades. <laughs> I think that there's... <laughs> Plenty of opportunity for those. Like, I, I, I do know some people, some people that I was friends with, and they were, uh, they were taking inner city courses uh, in high school. Yeah. Essentially, it's it's high school for. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean. Yeah, you know, people. I had a friend who did that too. Yeah, and they just didn't take it seriously at all. Huh. It was sort of the. The whole experience was, hey, let's go skip school and smoke some weed. This and is the joke. Why am I in school? Yeah, why am I? Why am I in school? I'm I'm good for school. I can yeah. dude, I can just work at Sobeys for the rest of my life and let's go drive a truck. It's let's go Alberta. drive a truck. Yeah, McMurray, make a hundred grand. Exactly, it's exactly. Totally worth it. And <laughs> and uh, if it works for them, it works for them. And mm. I, again, it's. I think in, in in that case, sure, okay, fine. It, it, you have a developmental disability. You have something that that holds you back, and you need to. What what, what what I'm what I'm interested in what what I'm interested in is is the kid trying, and how do I get them to try? Of course, you can't get people to try doing the subjects that they don't like, and they're like, "Oh, am I here?" And if yeah, if if they're in that situation, of course, I'm gonna do whatever is in my power to help them succeed. Of course, I'm not I'm not gonna be one of those teachers that go like, "I don't give a shit whatever that you you uh, you do in my class as long as it's not doing heroin, then I'm okay with it." No, well. I'm going to obviously want strive for success for every single person, but obviously success for every single person, it might not be possible, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to try to help them out. It's sort of the least I can do if I'm a teacher. Yeah. I, I guess that's why they keep separating the kids into like the, the AB class. Yeah. The AB of the 10 dash one, 10 dash two, 10 dash three. Uh, oh yeah no for, for, for us it's um i don't think we had dashes we, didn't have that? Oh. We, we did have that in junior high it's 
uh, yeah. more of the we had the engineering high and high school. So we had the A class, the B class, mm. the yeah. C class, right. and the D class. That's right. Yes, I remember that. I don't. I, I just remember the D class was. Uh, We'd given up already. At those yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From a young age, we decided you probably not going to be a class. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I remember. Th- Actually, that could be a turning point for a lot of people, though. Their life was set because they got put in the D class. And that set a long trajectory. Yeah, like a lot of the kids that went to the D class, they didn't... It's very hard to get out of the D class once you're in the D class. <sighs> very hard to get out of Damn, that. Damn, yeah. And if you see how the teachers teach the kids in the D class compared to how they talk to the kids in the A class, very different. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, the, and, and that's a good discussion that my parents are having right now is just putting, putting uh, my brother into another school. And that got me thinking, wait, hold on. Are you like brothers, what, older younger? I forget. He's uh, he's like thirteen, so fifteen, thirteen. So oh, he's so, young. So oh, yeah, okay. they're they're still they're looking for a high school uh, in is, order to see the A class, B class, C class, or D class. <laughs> I didn't ask him. Mm. I'm not sure. He's probably in the double Z class oh, or something. D class. Oh, <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. He's 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 an okay kid. I mean, it's okay. He's not gonna find out. He's not gonna listen to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, oh well. Obviously, you know, you're, you're a kid. You, you, you jo- you, your job, your job, your job as a brother is to point. is to annoy your siblings. That is very difficult, and it's one of those things where, yeah, because if you put the kid in the D class, you can get him through with lower grade, and the teacher will give him decent grades just to get him through. Yeah. You put that same kid in the, not your brother, I mean, forget your brother. You put the kid who was in the D class, you put him in A class. And now we're grading really hard relative to the D class. Yeah. And then they can't pass anything. And they feel like they, then they get held back a lot, right? Yeah. Maybe the trick is uh, to figure out what the kid's good at. But the, the thing is, you don't know because they're too young. You don't know yet either. Yeah, exactly. So you have to, you have to give them every, everything. There's no way to know until they happen to stumble across the thing they're good at. Yeah. You don't know what you're good at until you find it. <laughs> no way to know that. We just assume that math, um, English class, social, social class, gym, mm, like we assume those are important subjects. Yep. And we hope that that covers all the good topics. I think the, the education, board on education, sort of does their due diligence.